Hey, we're Easy Life and we're here chatting with Milky. We've been together now for like five years. We're from a small city in the middle of England called Leicester. And yeah, we all have similar interests and the city's like tiny. So if you make music in Leicester, then yeah, you're just basically gonna have to start a band. We're basically the five musicians from Leicester. And here we are. We've been together for a while. Um, and this is our first time in Australia. Do you know what? Talking about Australia, I actually was in Australia when we first started and we had a gig booked in January and I was in Australia till about December and you, I, my plan was to move out here because I have some family here and the only reason I came back was because we had a gig booked and it was tiny, it was like a like hundred people but I'm so glad I did. I'm glad you did too. That's a great question. I think Funnily enough, I think we've kind of gone full circle. This album that we're coming out with now, maybe in another life, is really similar to our first ever project, which was called Creature Habits. I mean, the songwriting and the production, and I think we've come a long way and we've matured a lot and gained a lot more confidence. So I think we're we're definitely getting better. But in terms of the uh, the ideas and like the like yeah like the ideals and the energy behind the album like we've really gone back to our roots we started easy life to sort of remedy the boredom of everyday existence and we were just doing it purely for the for the fun of it and then since then obviously we've become like professional musicians and like for a while that was kind of scary and weighed on us and we perhaps made some wrong decisions along the way in our career and then we were like you know what, when we do this new album, we just want to do it for us and go back to the roots of Easy Life and kind of just create interesting sounds and not really aim in a particular direction. So I honestly think we've literally gone back to, to the beginning with this one. I don't know where we're going to go next, but I definitely feel a lot more confident in our ability to write and produce music. Um, at the start, like we had absolutely no expectation that any of this would happen. I was really ad-libbing there. I've got frontman syndrome. She kept looking at us for like confirmation you're saying the right thing. But like, we're surrounding you. You go for it. We trust you. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yes, I need I need a lot of support, man. I need a lot. Yeah. The other day I had a, a anxiety attack in what? Well, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Seoul Airport, and I had Sam. I was lying on the floor staring at the top of the terminal building and Sam was stroking my face. So, um, yeah, I, I need a lot of help from these guys. We did a group meditation in the center of Seoul Airport and then I said, yeah, to take these headphones, bro, put them on his ears and blasted that self-titled Bon Iver album. And I was like, whenever I'm feeling stressed, it's so well produced, it just distracts you. You have to listen to how he's written and like produce that music. Yeah, you really helped me. Thanks, bro. <laughs> I think, um, yeah, lots of... Life happens really quickly, especially like in music and we do a lot of traveling and everything's been pretty full on for a few years and then obviously lockdown happened and that's... Coming out of lockdown is when I started working on this project and I think I'd sort of ignored a lot of shit that had gone on in my personal life as well as like our career. As a defense mechanism I just kind of like tried to ignore it and I think on this album I really delved deep and it was quite an introverted album and there's lots of stuff on there that uh, I don't know it was like important for me to write about just for my own sanity um, and I think I feel much better because of it. I feel like I'm really transitioning right now into like a better more positive space mentally which is like really refreshing and this album has really helped me do that but the the album maybe in another life it kind of centers around this idea of like what could have been had we have done things differently you know the the power of our decisions and the consequences and how they all interact as sort of like a the idea that we could have 
done anything with the hand we were dealt and then you kind of make your decisions some of them you regret some of them you look back and you think yeah that was good and yeah the album's all about that really i guess it's kind of in a little way about growing up and pff, trying to work it out it's it's complicated again through experimentation really i, I got I mean, this is a bit of a flex, but I felt like as of late, recently, certainly in the UK, there's a lot of people that sound like Easy Life. It's, it's flattering, of course, but it's really frustrating. And we were hearing it a lot. In fact, we would like share on our group chat, like, oh, listen to this, like, this sucks. Um, and like, I wanted to switch it. And it was, I'd sort of, we wrote this song called Dear Miss Holloway, which was formed like the cornerstone of the sonic identity of the album. And everything after that, we wanted to sound similar to that. So it had like, we used like loads of saturation and kind of tape machines and that old sort of 70s vintage style of recording. And then... Saying as well, like we've only just kind of had access to a lot of these techniques because sheer cost of equipment, like we couldn't ever afford that stuff. And like, we, bless, to be honest, Murray's invested a lot of his time and money into certain equipment that um, we didn't have before you know everything was just a 200 pound interface into a laptop whereas now it's like we can you know we've invested in that and yeah. I, I'm, I think a lot of the, that's you know with the saturation and yeah. all your tape machines and stuff we can only do that because we're like being able to tour and sign to labels and stuff like I think it's important to say like you definitely don't need any of that stuff like loads of the stuff on on these even this album is all done in the box like you don't need anything like some of the best producers will just do it all in on a laptop but we were just experimenting and, and like, yeah I think I just we wanted to switch it up we were bored of like you know I think Easy Life have always switched things up haven't we like one of our favorite things to do is to change styles and steal little bits from different uh, influences um, we all listen to such different music that it's quite easy for us to to switch at any point in the live, even in the live aspect it's like the songs sonically will sound different to the record so they, they'll be very very similar Every, like the chord progressions the guitars and everything will be the same but like the energy will be slightly different to the record just because we're excited to play shows so we try and like maybe jazz it up a little and like bring bring it bring more life into the live show which is why people have never understood why easy life have a mosh pit at their show because of the record but like yeah we we like bring the energy into the songs live for sure but then like the recordings are totally beautiful i feel like kevin was a guy who you know we've been listening to for years um and he brought nothing for me, but like he just brought a lot of happiness and like a lot of, um, how do I explain it? A, a very proud moment for Easy Life to have Kevin on such a song. Because it was, it was probably at the time, it was one of the, uh, Dimmis Holloway was one of our favourite songs from this album this far at the point. We were in Murray's flat in London, myself and Lewis and Murray speaking about like who we could get to feature on this record because we really wanted to dive into that world and we, we said about Kevin and we we're like no way man like let's think about this but yeah like it was like a super proud moment when Murray went to LA and met him and it it kind of just brought a whole new energy to the song because at the time Murray had already had a verse on the song which wasn't a rap verse it was again beautiful and like singy and but yeah so it just changed it because we respect him so much um, and like grew up listening to Brockhampton and stuff and loved the way they work. Uh, it was kind of like honoring, like it was amazing to have someone want to work with us that we really respect. Um, and then with Benny and Gus, I mean, we did our first ever tour with Gus Dapperton. That was our first ever tour when I, you know, we were like, like 20 or something. So, and your process with him was completely different because you, you wrote that over Zoom. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so Gus, is like our friend from since day he's like yeah we were super young because he came over to england and at the time we had like the exact same haircut and the exact same glasses so it was really funny it was so funny we we 
we don't look very similar now, but as as kids, we really did, and it was so fucking funny when we get together. That was not like nobody copied anyone. We hadn't heard of either of each other, and then like you guys met, and you just looked the same. Yeah, he's just literally looked just like me, but he's like five foot taller than me. We we, we had always let's just keep up after that tour, and then it was lockdown, and we'd been meaning to write a song together for ages, but there was like no chance of me going to America. So we just decided to try and write some music, like on the phone, together, and uh, it actually worked out. But Antifreeze came about because he was in New York. It was super cold, and I would I was like in between moving houses because of some like COVID situation that was happening, and I'd set my studio up in this like old barn in literally like the middle of nowhere with no heating or anything. So it was really cold. So the name Antifreeze came up and. He was freezing as well, so we just wrote that song together. And he kills it. He's such a talented, incredible human, and we love him. He is just the boy. Melody, melody king. Yeah, he is a melody beast. Um, and then Benny, um, I feel like Benny, we kind of know Benny through Gus, really, because they had that, that song together, that viral TikTok hit that we're all searching for. They, they've, they've been there and done it. I love Benny as well. I've always loved her. Uh, she's sick and um, I just reached out and we got chatting and she's hilarious she's honestly like she's easily the funniest person I've ever met other than number one is Jordan uh, and number two is, is Stella but again I had OTT like pretty much done but there was this big hole in it and she just she smashed it Antifreeze was definitely a different process to OTT and uh, Dear Miss Holloway because uh, Antifreeze it was like completely co-written together whereas yeah. OTT and Dear Miss Holloway we'd already had the songs and then just put the the verse on it so I have to say that Antifreeze to me feels the most kind of unique like the like new easy life like I don't think we've got a song like that because because of that. Yeah, it's like but really collaborative. And like, yeah, we, we made something fresh. It was sick. Maybe we should do like more phone call writing sessions. Maybe that's the answer. I would show them a song called Basement because the energy levels. I love energy. I probably have the most energy in the band. I'm probably the most awake. So I think that's probably why. I, <laughs> like I'm an early riser and everybody else I'm like fucking hell come on like let's get up and do something to basement for me because it's just a party tune <laughs> uh, George I know you want to say this one but uh, you can, you can go. I would definitely show anyone growing pains first it's like the the second song on the album I mean I've loved it as soon as it you know the song was made but we started rehearsing it a couple of weeks ago and I haven't really lost my mind. I lose my mind to a, to a lot of these songs in many different ways, but I lost my mind very way too hard to this tune. It's it's. Uh in the afternoon yeah. we're rehearsing and we all face like we're on a stage. We turn around and Jordan's just there like this, like. <laughs> yeah, because it just has like the chords that just like hit on every like beat. And your neck, mate, I thought was going to snap. So what's your song? Yeah, uh, I would like to play people Moral Support, which is like a kind of like a bossa nova type love song, um, which sort of two or three years ago, I would never have wanted to show anyone because it's like super exposing and raw and kind of like a bit cute. But uh, now I just think it's like it's a beautiful song. Um, so yeah, Lewis. I'll go with that one as well. It's got a really good um, like lap steel slide part that is sick to play. So I'd probably go with the title tracks. It's just it was made by an absolute legend. Uh, Ten second long. Yeah, it gives you all the information you need to know. No, I'd probably go with um, Silver Linings. Is just for super like upbeat lively super positive happy like all the all the plus side of easy life with none of the yeah none of the abject misery that comes with uh yeah realizing you have issues
Bob Marley and the Wailers and Fela Kuti. Rapid fire, no, my head's gone. Someone take it. Stevie Wonder. Okay. Ocean by Dive, spelled D-I-I-V. Miley Cyrus. Sorry, I really fancied that one. Oh, it was uh, Jules Holland and his Rhythm and Blues Orchestra at Chatsworth House in 2008. So I was really young. But yeah, it was crazy. Mental off a chain. M mine was, yeah, Paramore. His was McFly. <laughs> oh my god. In <laughs> Bonobo the other week oh. in France. Backstreet Boy. Backstreet. The Dark Knight. Probably my birthday in Norwich when I got thrown into the crowd to sing the Pockets chorus, and I drank most of a bottle of tequila. So all I rem yeah, all I remember from that show is what I see on video, essentially. <sighs> Just try your hardest. Kendrick Lamar. When I was a wee nipper, when I was a young man. Um, <laughs> when I wanted to be a musician was when I played in an Irish show band. That's when I knew. Uh, I didn't ever really know that I wanted to. Um, to yeah, I still, have n <laughs> still have no idea. Um, I used to play in a marching band and we did a show in a theatre. And I just, I, so I just had one big drum on me and I had like a little solo, I was at the Curve Theatre. I was like, I loved, loved the attention. He, he did that for us once, when you're really drunk, we made him do it, it's really sick. It's really sick. Probably like playing in the, f probably playing in the first uh, like jazz swing group that me and Murray ever played in together. Like at school, it was like just hearing everything be so nice and cohesive and being a part of like a group and making music like that was, yeah, just really, really sick. <laughs>